Have you ever tried to have a heart to heart conversation with your husband, your wife, maybe your boyfriend or your girlfriend, only to walk away feeling completely drained, depleted and confused, even more frustrated and in more pain than you were before the conversation began? In other words, completely frustrating and circular communication that goes nowhere and almost always ends in conflict, no matter how hard you try. Well, by the end of this video, you're going to know exactly how to approach and navigate a conversation with your narcissistic partner without giving your power away and feeling like you're going crazy. So be sure to stick around till the end of this video because you're going to learn a lot from it. And I know that's a lofty claim, but here's the thing. The tips, strategies, and techniques that I'm about to teach you will be a total game changer for you if you actually apply them. So let's get started. Hey friends, Tammy M. Joyce here, Empowerment Life Coach, and today I want to talk to you about how to talk to your narcissistic partner without feeling like you're going crazy. But before I begin this video, I want to quickly announce that a few spots have opened up to work with me in my eight-week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class. So if that's of interest to you, be sure to stick around until the end of this video for the announcement on that. And with that, let's get started. For the best advice on how to heal and recover from codependency and narcissistic abuse, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell to be sure to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. So let's talk about how to talk to your narcissistic partner without feeling like you're losing your ever-loving mind. First, let's address the challenge. You know, there's a saying in 12-step recovery, I think it was in Al-Anon many years ago that I heard it, and it really stuck with me because it resonated as so true to my experience up to that point. The saying goes as such, stop going to the hardware store looking for milk. And the truth is, more often than not, especially as untreated or newly recovering codependents and adult children of family dysfunction and trauma, that's exactly what we're doing. We're setting ourselves up for failure because we're trying to get our needs met by people who are fundamentally and constitutionally incapable of meeting them, right? So stop going to the hardware store looking for milk. In other words, it's vital that we tell ourselves the truth about who and what it is that we're dealing with. If we're approaching someone that we feel has narcissistic traits or lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, in other words, is an empathy deficient person lacking in conscience, lacking in empathy, lacking in the capacity to understand the impact of their choices, behavior, attitudes on us, the effect that their appalling behavior and attitudes can have on us, if that's who and what we're dealing with, we need to tell ourselves the truth about that right out of the gate. Also, as untreated or newly recovering codependents and adult children of family dysfunction and trauma, it's important to understand that our tendency is to react or overreact versus respond appropriately and assertively, right? So what ends up happening is we get triggered and we end up dancing like a puppet on strings. We're reacting. And there's this whole energetic game, this energetic transaction that takes place. When we overreact with high intensity, high voltage, negative intensity. It's like luge to an empathy deficient, conscienceless, high spectrum destructive narcissist. It's literally like they plug into us and siphon the vital life force energy from us. Energetically, this is a very real thing. And what happens is they get to be superior, they get to win, they literally get an energetic source of supply. They get fed on that level. They don't call them energy vampires for nothing. And we get to be crazy, hypersensitive, overreactive. We have anger issues. On and on and on it goes, ad nauseum, right? So it's important that we start from a place 
of exercising extreme self-care. It's important that we start from a place in so much as we are able to be standing on solid ground, having been taking care of ourselves to the best of our ability and growing in that fashion, in that area of our lives. And along with that is taking radical responsibility for ourselves and our lives. Now, what I mean by that is if we know that we are an untreated codependent or we have untreated adult child syndrome, which fundamentally means you grew up in a highly dysfunctional family. There's family of origin, wounding and trauma from early childhood. There's been abandonment, abuse, neglect. You've been the family scapegoat, whatever it is. We take radical responsibility for ourselves and our lives by embarking on whatever healing and recovery journey is appropriate for us. So when we have to have any form of communication with an individual like this, if we are standing on the ever growing, getting stronger and stronger by the day foundation of extreme self care and radical personal responsibility, it's going to be a whole lot easier to respond versus react. And I get that this is not easy right out of the gate. This is something that takes time and practice. It's multifaceted and multi-layered. But this is the challenge we face. We approach these conversations from a deeply wounded, deeply traumatized, highly reactive, and quite frankly, I've been there myself, very emotionally immature, operating from our wounded inner child perspective, and we're trying to be heard, and we're trying to be seen, and we're trying to get some sort of resolution in this frustrating, painful, energy-draining conversation and communication, and that is the crux of the challenge, right? So if we can get ourselves to a place where we are learning day in and day out, learning on the path, traveling the journey of exercising extreme self-care and taking radical responsibility for ourselves and our lives, we are setting ourselves up for success out of the gate. Everything else gets easier from that point forward. Now, next, you want to choose your timing wisely. Do not approach a conversation with someone that you know lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, is lacking in empathy, lacking in conscience, don't approach a conversation with an individual like that if you are sleep deprived, stressed, highly emotional, tired in any way, hurting in any way. First and foremost, take care of yourself, nurture yourself, go to your safe people, use them as a sounding board, work out some of the high voltage emotions first before you approach a serious conversation and communication with this type of individual. Timing is everything. If you're already depleted and drained, you are setting yourself up for a whole world of pain. This isn't going to go well for you. So choose your timing wisely, take care of yourself first, and approach the conversation and communication when you know you are standing on reasonably solid ground able to manage your expectations, to manage your emotions, to manage your boundaries to the best of your ability. Don't go in weak and depleted, sleep deprived, unable to think straight, highly stressed. You're, you're again setting yourself up for disaster. Go in when you're feeling relatively calm, relatively strong, relatively clear. That makes all the difference in the outcome of this kind of conversation. Next, you have to have realistic expectations. There is no point going into a conversation or any form of communication with someone who has already shown themselves to be lacking in empathy, lacking in conscience. You suspect lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, expecting them to show up with compassion, kindness, patience, tolerance, 
empathy. If you already know that you're dealing with a destructive narcissist, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to expect them to show up with empathy. They don't have the ability to do that. So it's vital that you have realistic expectations. Again, know your audience, know who it is that you're talking to and set yourself up with realistic expectations so that you're not setting yourself up for disappointment. So what do I mean by that? Well, when we're dealing with a destructive narcissist, what we know for sure from past experience is they are capable of being unbelievably cruel. They are capable of saying whatever it takes, no matter how untrue, unkind, cruel, or bizarre, in order to get their point or get their way or deflect any sort of you know, attention or responsibility away from them, right? They are capable of going for your emotional sore spot in the worst possible way, going for your juggler, really. So don't be surprised when you are trying to have any sort of difficult or uncomfortable conversation with them if that's what you're on the receiving end of, right? It's vital that you set yourself up with realistic expectations and then you know like if you set the bar here and the conversation goes better than expected great you've won but if you're going in expecting to be heard understood expecting to be you know received in a way that is kind loving patient filled with compassion and empathy you're highly likely not only to be disappointed but to be deeply deeply wounded again so once again, it's vital that you approach the conversation with realistic expectations. And with that, decide in advance, know in advance what the outcome is that you are looking for. Go in with a very clear and specific desired outcome. So realistic expectations and clear outcome, a clear agenda. You don't want to be emotional. You want to be logical and factual. You already know from previous experience that your emotions can and will be used against you, whether right here, right now in this conversation or later down the track, they will be used against you. So avoid giving them any ammunition that they can use against you now or later. Keep the emotion out of it in so much as you are able to. Again, easier said than done, but this can be done with intent, with practice, with exercising extreme self-care, with doing the things that you need to do to set yourself up with realistic expectations, choosing your timing, taking radical responsibility for yourself and your life. It is quite possible to go into this kind of a communication and conversation with a destructive narcissist and um, not be emotional, not lead with emotion, but instead logic and facts, not giving them any ammunition that they can use against you. Brief is always better. The goal is to remain calm, to hold on to yourself and your personal power and your dignity, and whatever you do, not to expose your emotional triggers. Take care of yourself. That's your job. They're not going to do that for you. And remember, a destructive narcissist is not a safe person to be vulnerable with, ever. If you've determined that the person that you're dealing with lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism, the sooner you accept and surrender to the reality that this is not now nor ever going to be a safe place for you to fall, no matter how much you wish it were different, accepting the truth is going to get you far further, far faster than magical thinking, wishing it was something that it's never going to be. A destructive narcissist is never going to be a safe place for you to fall. This is never going to be a safe person for you to be vulnerable with. And, you know, like the truth is, most people are not going to be safe for us to be vulnerable with. It's very important that we choose our safe, sacred circle very carefully and with great wisdom and discernment. That doesn't mean we have to wall ourselves off from the world and that we can't 
you know, navigate relationships, testing who is safe and who isn't, surely we have to open ourselves up and expose ourselves sometimes to some people in order to have real intimacy and real relating. But here's the thing. If you know you're dealing with a high spectrum destructive narcissist, again, this person is never going to be safe for you to be vulnerable with. The sooner you accept that reality and take care of yourself accordingly, the better. Now comment below and let me know if you've ever had this type of frustrating, painful communication with someone you suspect lands on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. And if so, how did that make you feel? Now, as I said before, you want to make some decisions in advance before you go into this type of communication with this type of individual. You want to know exactly what your goal is. What is your desired outcome? This isn't just, you know, an opportunity to spew and vent and, you know, hope that this time you're going to be heard and this time it's going to go your way, you've probably, if you're tuning into this video, had enough of these painful, frustrating conversations to know that that's not likely to be the case, right? So very, very important that you decide in advance what it is that you want to accomplish. What are you trying to communicate? What information is it that you need to deliver? What boundary is it that you need to set? What is the goal and desired outcome of this communication? Decide in advance what that's going to look like and sound like from your side of things. Very succinctly, again, brief is always better, succinct and clear. You also want to decide in advance where exactly it is that you're going to draw the line. So you want to enter the conversation calmly, kindly, respectfully, stating your boundaries and your expectations. Now that can sound something like this. I have X number of minutes and I'm really hoping our conversation can be productive and respectful. Please know in advance that if you are disrespectful, raise your voice at me, start slinging mud, start calling me names, whatever it is, whatever it is that you can anticipate based on prior experience, please know in advance that if any of the above happens, I'm gonna leave the room, the conversation will be over, and we can pick it up later when you're more ready and able to have a mature, a kind, a respectful adult conversation communication with me. Just fill in those banks, blanks based on what is appropriate to your experience with the individual that you're dealing with. In other words, if you interrupt me, insult me, start slinging insults, mud, accusations, that sort of thing. Just know in advance that the conversation will be over. I'll remove myself and we'll have to pick it up at another time. You set the tone. You have the choice as to how you are willing to tolerate being spoken to. They have the choice as to whether or not they will respect your boundaries. You have the choice as to whether or not you'll participate in the conversation. And remember, tonality is everything. Calm, clear, succinct. No whining, no pleading, no begging, no yelling. Calm, clear, healthy adult communication. Brief is better. Keep it succinct. Be clear. Watch your tonality. Guard your emotional triggers. Establish your boundaries and expectations. And then follow through. You want to approach the conversation as if you are simply delivering information. You've set the tone. You've stated your boundaries and expectations. And if they absolutely refuse to respect your boundaries, and the next thing you know, you're being insulted, they're yelling at you, the abuse begins, what have you, you must follow through. If you don't follow through with what you say you're going to do, you lose all credibility. And it's quite possible that you've already lost a lot of credibility up to this point, but it does get to be a new day. And from here moving forward, when you say you're going to remove yourself, if they become disrespectful, it's vital that you actually remove yourself. But again, just approach the conversation as if you're delivering information, you're being kind, you're being respectful, you're being clear. 
and fully expect and anticipate that you're going to have to repeat yourself. So you state your boundaries clearly. You state your expectations clearly. I have X number of minutes. I'm hoping our conversation can be productive and respectful. If it's not, this is what's going to happen. We'll have to come back to it later when you're more able, more ready, more prepared, more willing, whatever it is, and you remove yourself if need be. And then you revisit it again at another time where you may very well have to repeat everything all over again. It is quite likely that you will be tested and that you will have to repeat yourself. And if you find yourself repeating your boundaries and expectations for the second or third time, you can use this as a simple warning. Are you testing me? If they're pushing against your boundaries that have clearly been set with regards to what's going to happen in terms of the environment of this conversation, again and again, a simple, are you testing me? Because you know from previous behavior that I am willing to leave the conversation, leave the room, do whatever it is that is appropriate in your circumstance. So they, they've, they've now had a taste of that. So you can now simply say, are you testing me? Silence. See what happens. It's important that you're willing to get comfortable with the uncomfortable silence. When you say something like, are you testing me? Silence. Let the uncomfortable silence be what it is. Breathe, hold on to yourself, know that you can exit the situation if you need to. Get uncomfortable with the with, get comfortable rather with the uncomfortable silence. This is very much a new form of communicating for many of you and certainly for the person on the receiving end of your new boundaries and expectations and clear, succinct, precise communication, right? So learning to make your statement, be quiet, and just be in that space as uncomfortable as it may be, your job is to breathe, hold on to yourself, trust yourself, and know that you can navigate this, if you're willing to practice, you can navigate this with elegance and grace and self-respect and dignity, not giving your power away. Again, setting your boundaries and expectations as clearly and succinctly as possible and following through. When you say that the consequence of their behavior is going to be X, Y, Z, follow through. And remember, you don't have to explain, justify, or defend yourself. They're likely to want to get you on the defensive. The moment you start justifying and defensing, defending yourself, getting emotional, they've got you. And you are literally allowing them to siphon your vital life force energy from you. So if you catch yourself reacting with you know, negative emotional intensity, defending yourself, performing, dancing in any way, shape, or form, stop. Mid-sentence if need be. Breathe, recalibrate, and be willing to leave if that's what you need to do. Now, a few final points. You want to be making eye contact during this conversation, this communication, but doing so with empathy, calm, clear, detached communication, not confrontation. You want to be confident, not passive or pleading, but adult, confident, certain, sure, assertive. Know that they are always going to be coming from the perspective of what's in it for me. That's the MO of a high spectrum destructive narcissist or anyone with narcissistic traits and tendencies, to be honest with you. So expect that upfront, know that in advance. That's their perspective. What's in it for me? When they change the subject, which they will, bring it back to the original issue at hand as often as necessary. I can sound something like this. I'd like to resolve XYZ before we address anything else. 
one issue at a time, please. And just keep circling back to the original issue that you wanted to address from the get-go, as often as need be. Do not try to appeal to an empathy that is not there. There is no point. Appeal to their self-interest instead. That will get you much farther, much faster. Now, with that said, you can ask them respectfully to put themselves in your place, in your position, without sarcasm or defensiveness. Just stick to the facts and keep the emotion out of it. And you already know from past experience that their agenda is to win or be right at all costs, including your sanity, your peace of mind, your peace of heart, your well being. So don't expect anything different. No going in that that is what you're dealing with. They will do and say whatever it takes to win, to be right at all costs. Your job is to communicate as clearly and succinctly as possible with healthy boundaries and limits in place while you take care of yourself, extreme self-care, radical self-responsibility, and I get starting from ground zero, this is a whole lot easier said than done, but again, I wanna reassure you with practice, this can be done. You can exercise the muscle and get really, really good at this. It's just important that you accept that there's not likely to be any consideration for the impact of their appalling attitudes, choices, and behaviors on you, and maybe even your loved ones. So expecting it to be different than what it is, is an exercise in futility. Surrender to the reality of what you're dealing with, and if you insist on continuing to communicate with this type of individual or maybe you're in a situation where extricating yourself from this relationship or this dynamic immediately isn't possible, using these strategies will help you have far more effective and productive communication that doesn't cost you your peace of mind and cause you to feel like you're about to have a nervous breakdown, which unfortunately sometimes can be the case when we're dealing with this type of crazy making individual and crazy making communication. And finally, before you go in, you might want to take some time practicing the following statements in the mirror. Things like, oh, and silence. Okay. No sarcasm, no defensiveness, no confrontational attitude, just okay and silence. No. Silence. No thank you. And silence. I prefer not. I prefer. I'd rather. You can choose to continue to scream, yell, insult me, whatever may be going on. That's fine. However, if you continue to do so, I'll choose not to be in your company while you're behaving this way. Silence. Please know that how you choose to communicate, behave, whatever it is, is fully your choice, your right, and your prerogative. However, what I'm willing to tolerate, put up with, be on the receiving end of, be exposed to, is my choice. And from this day moving forward, I choose to no longer put up with, tolerate, be exposed to, be on the receiving end of X, Y, Z. Silence. So again, take some time to practice these statements in the mirror, eyeball to eyeball with yourself, breathing, getting so comfortable and so used to this form of clear, succinct, sometimes one word only, real clear, real succinct, real concise communication, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable silence as it lands, and you're teaching this individual a whole new way of being around you, communicating 
with you. So it's not necessarily going to be comfortable for anyone initially, but if you put these strategies into practice, again, they will take you a lot farther, a lot faster than the kind of communication that we can often find ourselves engaged in that leaves us feeling completely drained, completely depleted, completely confused, completely frustrated, and in even more pain than when we started out right? So be willing to put in the time to practice on your own, maybe with a safe friend, a partner, in the mirror, whatever it is, but practice first so that when you're having the real conversation, this isn't so entirely fresh for you. You've developed a little bit of muscle, and when you start to get emotional, you've got some tools with you that can help you hang on to yourself. And with that, I'm gonna call it a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope this was helpful. And if you'd like to learn more about working with me in my eight-week transformational coaching program, The Freedom Class, be sure to check out the links in the description below for all the details on how you can go about doing that. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell to be sure to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. And as always, I will leave you with this. Know your value. Know your value and unlock your freedom. Much love. Bye for now.